Spiral Dynamics, an overview, common misconceptions, and its connection to the arts and significance for artists. Okay, today we're going to be getting into Spiral Dynamics uh, deeper. I've sort of teased the term, uh, teased this idea in a couple of my previous videos on the meaninglessness crisis. I'll put a link to those in the description, description below. Um, I love Spiral Dynamics. It's, it's a really amazing and powerful model of human growth and development. And it has such a wide ranging variety of insights and applications to daily life, to politics, to relationships, to um, your work, your art, to everything that you do. I find that Spiral Dynamics has utterly transformed the way that I think about the world for the better. It's made me much more mature, much more aware of sort of hidden dynamics in the world. It's helped me understand politics at a much deeper level. Uh, you know, beyond the polarization, it's helped me become a better artist, a better musician, better teacher, better friend, and family member. So. I, re I really love this model. So I'm going to be sharing uh, an overview of Spiral Dynamics today, some common misconceptions, and just a very brief summary of each stage. And in future videos, I'm going to share a more in-depth understanding of each stage with examples from the arts. So I'll be um, sharing like what Spiral Dynamics, each stage of Spiral Dynamics looks like for artists and musicians and others. So whether you're a musician or an artist or not, uh, you'll, you'll still find this really helpful and hopefully you'll find those examples really uh, inspiring or maybe they'll make certain connections for you that you might not have uh, otherwise with just sort of general examples. So before we get into all that, my name is Joseph Arnold. I'm a violinist, Alexander Technique teacher, and director of the Soul Force Arts Institute. And today I'm gonna to be reading from my upcoming book, Soul Force Arts, The Vital Role of Musicians and Artists in Creating a More Beautiful World. And I have a whole two chapters on spiral dynamics in, in my book because I think it's just so important for us as artists to understand and to embody. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna re read my overview and I'm gonna read my section on common misconceptions. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and the previous two videos I've done were also from my Spiral Dynamics chapter. Uh, those were on the meaninglessness crisis because, because the Spiral Dynamics does provide probably the best, one of the best uh, answers to the meaninglessness crisis that pervades our society that I know of. Okay, without further ado, Spiral Dynamics Overview. <clears throat> and I begin with a quote from Claire Graves, who is the developer of Spiral Dynamics. Briefly, what, I'm, what I am proposing is that the psychology of the mature human being is an unfolding, emergent, oscillating, spiraling process marked by progressive subordination of older, lower behavior systems to newer, higher order systems as man's existential problems change. Hmm. Okay, that's clear graves. Now my own words. Spiral dynamics is a developmental model that describes the various stages of evolution that humans go through, both individually and collectively, and which can help us understand art and the growth of consciousness. First, developed by Claire Graves in the 1960s, oh, and as, as an aside, so right, I'm writing this book for artists, which is why I mention art, but really it can be applied to anything. First developed by Dr. Claire Graves in the 1960s, it shows that each stage of development is characterized by a unique worldview or value system, one that builds on, but is no longer limited to, the previous stages of development. And here I would recommend that you pause the video and go look at some images of spiral, the spiral dynamics uh, model. You'll see this, this common spiraling, almost looks like a tornado, or you'll see um, other images with the, the stages listed. That, that would be a, 
it, it's useful to have the, those colors in mind the, the, of the different, different stages. Okay, while the developmental stages that children go through are widely recognized, spiral dynamics tells us that there are stages of development that actually continue well into adulthood, which are also mirrored across societies. Each stage is characterized by greater capabilities and a larger, more inclusive sphere of concern. Spiral dynamics is a particularly powerful model of human development because it explains the ways people can understand or misunderstand each other. It allows insights into the ways in which we might be getting stuck, and it tells us the directions in which we are likely to grow. Each stage is indicated by a color, red, blue, orange, etc., which the developers of Spiral Dynamics picked somewhat arbitrarily and which have no unique meaning in and of themselves. Um, as an aside, a lot of people try to look for meaning in the colors. There, there really isn't. That The colors only came about when color printing, <laughs> you know, back in the 1980s, became more widely used. Before then, there were just these labels involving different letters um, that were very abstract. Uh, and, and the colors don't like, align with the chakras or the rainbow or anything like that. They're arbitrary. As you read about each stage in this and the following sections, and I'll be sharing about these stages in the following videos, keep in mind that all stages are necessary to healthy development. To try to bypass or downplay certain stages will only lead to disaster. After all, a strong, healthy tree trunk is necessary for strong, healthy branches and leaves. The sequence of stages then has a clear chronological order. The stages further down the spiral are those that emerge earliest in a person's or society's life. And those that are further up the spiral are those that can only emerge later on in life. But no stage once a body is ever left behind. For example, a healthy person at spiral dynamic stage orange, orange will also have healthy blue, red, and purple characteristics. Integral philosopher Ken Wilber famously described this dynamic with the term transcend and include. What he meant was that each stage builds on the last, but is also no longer limited to it. Just as running includes the bipedal motion of walking, but goes beyond it with greater speed. This is especially important to keep in mind because all the spiral dynamic stages prior to yellow and turquoise, uh, which we'll get into later on, tend to deny the validity of all the other stages. For example, people at the traditionalist blue stage tend not, not to be able to understand the more advanced impulse to inclus inclusivity of postmodern green. And likewise, people at green tend to deny that the traditional values or institutions encouraged by blue could possibly have any more value. On the other side, you can hear like, where some of the culture wars come from. These are actually about different stages of uh, psychological development, not being able to understand each other and, and clashing. That's what the culture wars are. Um, indeed, spiral dynamics makes it possible to understand that much of the conflict we see in the world today is because people in purple, red, blue, orange, and green just don't get each other. This all changes with stage yellow, however. Claire Graves considered stage yellow to be the beginning of a second tier of human consciousness because it's the first stage to fully recognize that all the other stages have their unique gifts to offer. Yellow sees things in terms of evolutionary development. It sees that people and civilizations evolve and gain complexity and competency over time. For example, someone in this second tier of consciousness may realize the value of blues institutions while also realizing that blue has its limitations. Such a recognition actually grants yellow and other second tier stages a power and capability unique among all the other stages. By accepting the evolutionary necessity of all the previous stages, yellow gains access to the benefits of each of the previous stages while avoiding many of their pitfalls. This ability allows someone at stage yellow a far greater sense of well-being, creativity, functionality, competence, 
self-actualization and vision than is possible for any of the previous stages. This is why Claire Graves called Stage Yellow a momentous leap in human consciousness. And as an excellent example of yellow thinking, the spiral dynamics model is also a tool that can you, you can use in order to move into stage yellow yourself. Okay, so I'm going to read my next section on common misconceptions. Yeah, this, but spiral dynamics is a very nuanced um, model, and people at different stages of development or yeah, have different points of view on um, what spiral dynamics is. And so by pointing out some of these different misconceptions, um, you know, I, I can help flesh out your understanding, or you can help yourself flesh out your understanding of what spiral dynamics actually is and what it isn't. Okay, so common misconceptions. Here's another quote, this one from author Ken Wilber. I have one major rule, everybody is right. More specifically, <clears throat> everybody has some important pieces of truth. And all of those pieces need to be honored, cherished, and included in a more gracious, spacious, and compassionate embrace. Right, that's Ken Wilber. When first learning about spiral dynamics, many people have certain misconceptions about... Oops, just a moment. It's my uh, vacuum robot, eager to get going today. <clears throat> Okay, so before examining how spiral dynamics applies to the arts, it is vital to first address these misconceptions so that you are better equipped to accurately understand this complex and nuanced model. Firstly, these stages do not and cannot describe the totality of any person or society. These stages are merely generalizations and are not meant in any way to pigeonhole, demean, disempower, or categorize people. People and societies are living beings whose value and essence can never be reduced to numbers, colors, or concepts. These stages are simply useful abstractions discovered through a rigorous scientific process. Another common critique of the use of, spiral de of de developmental models like spiral dynamics is that their use might justify oppressive hierarchies. But this is not the case. The point of view of spiral dynamics is that while growth does lead to greater competence, maturity, and self-actualization, a person or a society at a more advanced stage of development has exactly the same fundamental human value as one at a, at a less developed stage. Here, just, just a moment. Yeah, I'll, say, I'll say a bit more about that. One of the most common objections to spiral dynamics is that historically speaking, notions of progress or hierarchy have been used to destroy our environment or oppress marginalized peoples. The concern is that since spiral dynamics seems to have a hierarchical structure, that it too may be used in this way. While this objection does have a certain truth, it also misses that hierarchies and progression are actually foundational to life and reality as we know it. For example, one hierarchy in nature is that of the great chain of being, which describes the structure of reality from atoms to molecules to organisms to ecosystems and beyond. Within this chain, despite its apparent hierarchy, no link oppresses any of the others. They all work synergistically to create reality as we know it. Similarly, progress is also a feature of nature and poses no inherent threat. For example, it is the very progress of human thought that allows us to be concerned about oppression in the first place. Indeed, without the very considerable progress our ancestors made as imperfect, imperfect as it was at times, our own survival conditions would still be so difficult that we wouldn't be able to enjoy the luxury of caring for others. Thus, the real problem at hand is not that spiral dynamics might be used to oppress or dominate people at lower stages, Rather, it's that our world's problems are the result of trying to meet the demands of our increasingly complex world with outdated modes of being. 
modes that are nothing other than expressions of the lower stages of the spiral. If this is the case, then trying to prevent yourself or others from growing up the spiral is not an act of preventing potential victims from harm. It would actually be nothing less than doing humanity, dooming humanity to repeating the destructive patterns that have caused all the harm to begin with. The ultimate lesson of spiral dynamics is that what humanity, the planet, and the arts all need right now is a period of intense growth up the spiral. Nothing less will help us navigate our turbulent times. Okay, so very briefly, and I'm, again, I'm going to go into much more depth in the coming, upcoming videos, but I just want to um, name all the different stages, and then with each one, just say like their motto and what they're about very briefly, just a sentence or so. Purple, magic. Feeling at home, safety, tradition. Its motto is home sweet home. All right, so you get, you get a little bit of a feeling of what purple is about there. Red, mythic. Power, speed, impulsive. Its motto is, fortune favors the bold. That has a different quality to it, doesn't it? After red is blue, traditional. Order, rules, transparency. Its motto is, practice what you preach. That has quite a different flavor to it, doesn't it? <clears throat> Orange, modern, competitive, entrepreneurial, being the best. Its motto is, the sky's the limit. Green, postmodern, group focus, ideals, social. Motto is, happiness is truest when shared. I'm sure you can think of people in your life who fit each of these stages, huh? Or maybe different parts of yourself. All right. And then we enter the second tier, which is yellow and turquoise. Here's yellow. Integral. Visionary. Systems thinking. Synergy. Its motto is think global, act local. And then turquoise. <clears throat> whole view. Holistic. Whole view. Cosmic consciousness. Its motto is to hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. And that's actually from a poem by William Blake. Okay, so that's a lot of information. Take a breath, let it in. Just notice what's coming up for you. Um, so, just briefly, Spiral Dynamics is believe essential for artists because it allows us to understand the historical the historical progression of the arts the evolution of the arts it allows us to develop our creativity and our skills to much greater levels like for instance and I'll, and I'll talk about this more in future videos one of the great problems that our current arts pedagogy or art school have, have is that they're stuck at blue and orange and a little bit in green. And what this means is that their ideas of like what, what art and music are about are really outdated. Blue originated you know, like 10,000 years ago and the orange originated a couple hundred years ago, maybe four or 500 years ago. And so the, these ideas come from a certain time in history, and it, they have a whole world view that goes along with them, and our world is now so complex and interconnected, and these earlier stages it just aren't really competent to deal with these challenges, deal with the complexity of life uh, by themselves. They're, they're all necessary in their own ways, and they can't do it by themselves. And so by growing into yellow, by like teaching from yellow or turquoise, the second tier stages, um, by creating from yellow, by um, performing in a yellow way, by transforming your institution, your art institution into a more yellow kind of place, then you can help bring the arts into tw the 21st century and thereby help our, us and our audiences, artists and our audiences, uh, better meet the challenges of our life. Um, 
So I'll, I'll get more into all the specifics, my critique of arts institutions and arts, art schools uh, in later videos, but that's just a sneak preview of what's coming up. Okay. Um, so if you enjoyed this, if you're curious about spiral dynamics, you want to learn more about spiral dynamics in general, <clears throat> or its relationship to the arts, then click that like button and subscribe to this channel. Uh, leave a comment on, on my video and let me know what you think. Uh, I got a lot more content like this coming to you, personal growth kinds of things, um, spirituality for the arts, uh, healing, how to heal yourself, how to heal your physical and emotional wounds, uh, th th those wounds that are common to musicians and artists. I'm going to share with you all my best knowledge. I'm going to be reading from my book. I'm going to be speaking from my experience as a professional violinist and Alexander Technique teacher. And I've helped countless musicians re relieve injuries. Um, and I'm going to speak from my experience being a philosopher <clears throat> and seeker and how all that mixes into the arts. And that really, that's really what this whole force arts approach is about. So stay tuned. I'll see you next time.